sell to individual retail customers, we believe large industrial customers, or large groups of customers, or a group of large customers, and then use our power lines to deliver it. <coughs> I've left a uh, handout to try and simplify this issue a little bit for you in terms of the big picture of looking at CPL's overall system. At the bottom of that sheet, it shows our sources of electricity. And it's important to remember that Central Power and Light has made major investments over the years to make sure that our 600,000 customers have electricity. That when you flip the switch, the lights come up. As a result of that, we have 11 power plants and we've invested over $3 billion. But that's only half the picture. Generating the electricity is only doing half of the job. The rest of the job is delivering that electricity to you. And that means that we've built over 5,000 miles of transmission lines, some 283 substations, and nearly 35,000 miles of distribution lines. That's an additional investment of over $450 million. We take the obligation to serve our customers very, very seriously. And again, that's why we're excited about these options that are becoming available as a result of wholesale competition. It's the good type of competition. But retail wheeling, no matter what you call it, is bad. It's a bad deal for our customers. And the reason it is, is quite simple. Imagine that you're a part of a carpool and somebody lures another member of that carpool away or more than one member of that carpool away. Your costs just went up. And that's what happens with retail wheeling. That's why so many groups that don't normally make up our, the list of our uh, fan club have joined us in opposition to retail wheeling. Groups such as Public Citizen, Consumers Union, the AFL-CIO, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. These are not groups that normally support a lot of our activities. So it's very, very significant that they come out in opposition of retail wheeling. They know that this is going to hurt residential and commercial customers. And that's why we're concerned about it. Obviously, Desktop is one of the most vocal advocates of retail wheeling. The reason is obvious, you know, the reason is quite easy to understand. They can't cut it on the wholesale market. They, they existed and prospered as a result of contracts that, that, that were mandated, that were essentially forced upon Houston Lighting and Power and Texas Utilities. Let me explain. There was a law that, exi that exists that says that electric utility companies have to purchase any available electricity that a local, local supplier has. And they have to purchase it at what's known as the avoided cost. Well, there was another law that was in place that prohibited utility companies from building power plants using natural gas. That meant that that avoided cost was higher than it needed to be. To give you an example, this and because of this, you had a situation where Houston Lighting and Power and its customers paid $800 million more than they would have otherwise. Just let me give you an example of how insane this situation was. Destec would sell its electricity to Houston Lighting and Power for about 5.2 cents per kilowatt hour. Then HLMP had to sell that same electricity back to, to Destec for about 3 cents per kilowatt hour because that's what their industrial rate was. They were making a profit for electricity that never left the power plant. It was a bird nest on the ground. And essentially what it was, was a federally mandated entitlement. And now what they're asking for is nothing more than a state mandated bailout. That doesn't sound like a good situation. As a matter of fact, as a result of when the, the law changed that, re, that prohibited utility companies from building new natural gas fired plants, that avoided cost came down. And that meant that the avoided cost came down, and when the contracts came up for, for renewal, HLMP and TU said, your costs are not competitive. We'll buy it, but we're not gonna buy it at that price. Destec's now got a situation where they are in dire financial straits. As a matter of fact, USA Today listed them as the number one earnings anticipated earnings loser in the country for 1995. I would ask you, is that who you want to rely on when you 
took the switch. Destek will also tell you they've got four cent per kilowatt hour available. Again, that's half the picture. That's power at the power, that's the, the, the price at the power plant. If you could back up a, a truck to that power plant, take that electricity home with you, you can have it for four cents per kilowatt hour. It's not a fair situation. Again, it's a situation of giving half the picture. It's misleading. And that's why we have a real problem with a lot of the campaign that they have launched on this. We share their excitement about competition. We really do. The good news here, though, is Texas, Texans are not falling for, Dex, for Destex efforts. We're too smart for that. We know that when somebody says something, when somebody says something that's too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. Of the three bills that have been introduced in the state legislature, two of them have language specifically prohibiting retail wheeling. The third one doesn't have, doesn't address it at all. We look forward to competition. We look forward to growing with South Texas. Rotary Club was founded in 1905 in Chicago, and their reputation in terms of providing service to the communities <clears throat> is well known. CPL was formed, was created about 11 years later, and our reputation in, uh, for involvement in our communities and growing with South Texas is also well known. We take service beyond just providing electric, ser providing electric service. We know that we have to have people ready, standing ready, 24 hours a day to restore service in adverse weather conditions, such as the three hurricanes that we've been through, such as the simmering summers that we've gone through and the ice storms. We're gonna be around for another 80 years. We look forward to that. In closing, I would turn to the four-way test. I would challenge each of you to ask yourselves whether Destex claims meet the four-way test. Is it the truth? You be the judge. On one hand, their ad campaign says they do not want to serve individual residential customers. On the other hand, Charles Goff, their president, and Chief Executive Officer on October the 4th when testifying before a Senate subcommittee when asked by Representative Silas whether he would serve him as an individual at his home, he said no. Asked if they, would, if they desired to serve Johnson & Johnson, a nearby industrial customer, he said yes, most assuredly. Seems like there's a, a discrepancy between the ad campaign and the testimony. You be the judge in that regard. Second question, is it fair? Retail wheeling is not fair. Is it beneficial? I mean, does it promote goodwill and friendship? I'll leave that to you. Is it beneficial to all? I don't think so. Thank you very much.